Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is Gary Busey. He is a Hollywood star for decades upon decades. He's in studio. He's written books. He has his Buseyisms. I I'm very excited for this interview because you are. Uh, like I was saying beforehand, in two of my favorite movies, Point Break Ugh. and Rookie of the Year. No. And we will get into all of that. But it's just great to have you. It's great. I mean, you are exactly as advertised even walking in here. Well, I would like to thank you for giving me the honor and the privilege of coming on your show to speak about what we are going to speak about. Right. So, which is what? What are... Which is what? Yeah, what, what are we planning on speaking about? Did you, Whatever. Did you just get here? I did, yeah. <laughs> just I just arrived this very second. Use your imagination, no, but don't let it get out of control. I can't make any promises, but I, I am also a very big fan of yours. Uh, Predator 2 was Ooh. a great film. The Buddy Holly story. Under Siege. Under Siege. We could list the, them all. The list goes on Black Sheep. What? Under Siege. Yeah. 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 What was it like to work with Steven Seagal? Well, it was different. It was different. Yeah. It was just different. Uh, I've done, I'm not bragging, I've done over 165 projects in film, television, and miniseries. And uh, each one is a different galaxy. Each one is a different phenomenon. Each one is a different miracle and blessing. So I take on the work I've been given to do with that kind of attitude. And if you don't have anything nice to say about anybody, don't say it. Mm. Because it hurts you more than it does the person you think you're hurting. Mm -hmm. Be kind. Be courageous. Be accepting with respect. Out of, out of all these movies that we list, and then there, you know, there are so many others, which one is the one that you look back on and, and you take the most pride in? Wow. That would be the Buddy Holly story. Because two months after I finished the movie, I saw it and I realized... And I know, in my faith and my belief, Buddy Holly's spirit was singing through me. I was the messenger. Hmm. In tribute and honor, Charles Harden Holly. Lived in Lubbock, Texas, in the panhandle of Texas. And the ground is very flat in that part of Texas. And you know what's good about living in a town where the ground is flat around you? You can watch your dog run away for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's oof, oof. I never there thought of it there that way. Now. Tough to lose a dog. <laughs> he just keeps running. Oh yeah, he didn't stop <laughs> for two weeks straight. So you were you were born in that area. You were born in Texas and lived in Oklahoma. I was born in Goose Creek, Texas, eleven fifty a.m., June 29th, nineteen forty four, and the Little Duke Hospital delivered by the grandson of Pawnee Bill, who was an Indian scout. My father was in the South Pacific fighting World War II as a CB. CBs can do. So so you were born in the middle of World War II. Not the middle. Or towards the end. Yeah, towards yeah. the end. But you know kind of the middle out there, between the middle and the end. Yeah, between <laughs> somewhere between the middle and the end. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe during the third quarter of World War II. Third quarter? It's like maybe two minutes left in the third Start quarter. Fourth. I think yeah. like once we hit Normandy we put our fours up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You could say, yeah, like fourteen minutes left in the fourth you quarter. You know, I love you guys and your imagination. Because even though your imagination is out of control, it's very good. <laughs> Thank it's you. incredible. Thank you. So, so you and, and you, you're uh, you started in music, not acting, right? You started as a drummer, and you were trying to. You had a band before you decided to become an actor. Is that correct? Well, it's partially correct because music and acting are the same thing. Yeah, I used to get Quaker Oats. Uh, cylinders that were empty and Folgers coffee cans and tin cups and get pencils and play like I was playing drums in the living room in the first grade. And my mother would get out of bed and say, stop playing those drums and kick them all you away. You can swear on this. Yeah, fuck. fuck. That, no, I just, no. Motherfucker. She, she said, oh, that wasn't, your stop mom playing bleeped those it. Drums. Your mom would beep. Would beep it. Okay. Got yeah, it. well, I'm not beeping her. That's what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that acting and music is the same thing. What do you mean by that? Well, music... It's a beautiful thing everyone carries in their heart and their soul and their spirit. Music. Acting is the absence of acting. It's believing in the truth of the moment you're creating at that time with your heart without thinking. Absence is the, or acting is the absence of acting. It's believing in the truth of the moment you're creating at that instant without thinking. So the best actors are really not acting at all. No, God, how can't they? Huh. I flew back from Tahiti. LAX and my 
seat partner was Marlon Brando. He said, Gary, you have to remember that life is just a dress rehearsal. Just make it up as you go without thinking, and you'll be fine. <laughs> so That's pretty you, good. That's good advice. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have so, you ever met anybody that doesn't like music, though? There are a few people that I've run into that just don't like music, and I don't really trust them. Oh, you don't trust people who don't like music? If you mm. say, I don't like music as a blanket statement, to me, that's a red flag. It's it's kind of a strange thing to say, you, right? you got to look at what they're not aware of and give them a prayer of understanding the beauty of the music they carry in their heart. Because we all do carry music in our heart. We sing to ourselves. We sing to songs we hear on the radio. And it makes you feel good. Singing a song on the radio, you're in the car driving, you feel like a star. But let me tell you, what the definition of a star is. A star is nothing but a self-contained mass of gas way up in the sky. And they come in at night, and when they tink, twinkle at you, they're saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you right there. Yes. I like that. That's uh, so Finally, you like something I said. <laughs> no, I like hey, everything you say. Oh, I think I think. <laughs> can we um can we talk about your uh your motorcycle accident and the fact that you died for two hours? You were dead for two hours, correct? Did you go to heaven? Did you Do you know what heaven looks like? I know what it feels like because I have been in the spiritual zone, in the supernatural, surrounded by angels. And my essence was about 12 inches long and about a quarter of an inch wide. And that is your soul. And your soul is housed in the column of your spine. So I went off. I'm a Hardy Davidson going 40 miles an hour without a helmet, hit my head first into a curb, then my pelvis hit split my skull on the right side, knocked a hole in as big as a 50 cent piece. They took bones out of my pelvis to fill the hole. I got a dent there, it was like playing golf on the wrong course, you know, poof, golf ball hit me. Anyway, it was a beautiful experience of understanding something that I wouldn't have understood without having the accident. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna do something about this. So I went to Washington. I remember John McCain, God bless you John McCain, Bill Frist, Orrin Hatch. Ted Kennedy, and talked to them about what happened to my head. And I said, we have to create something. And so I signed, hey! excuse me, I signed a piece of paper, and that was the advocate statement that created the Traumatic Brain Injury Act that President Clinton signed in 1996. So the motorcycle accident gave me a gift to help save others and wear your helmet. That's fantastic. That's I've I've heard yay, yay. some people they go through an experience like that. Obviously, every day is a gift after that. After you come back from an experience where you you come so close to death, or in your case, you you feel heaven. Uh, was there anything that you when you when you came back to when you started going through your rehabilitation process? Was there any skill or anything that you were able to do after the accident that you weren't able to do before the accident? Everything was different in the way I saw life and the way I felt it. And you know what a deja vu is? A deja vu is when your mind picks up something before your brain does. Then when your brain picks it up, it's like, I've been here before, this has happened before. I had what's called, what I call, vuja days. And that's something I saw that I'd known I'd seen before, but it was like the first time I was seeing it. A brand new opening to a brand new way of life. Thank God for the accident. And I went and we did the Traumatic Brain Injury Act. Mm -hmm. Yay! Now I'm working on making the helmet law mandatory in every state in the union because that computer that sits on our neck controls our whole corporate body being emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Mm -hmm. and without the computer, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in in talking about all your roles in, in uh, all the movies you've been in, what is the one or two that you always look back and you're like, man, that was the one that I really nailed, or I had the most fun doing that one. Well, the one, the ones I've had the most fun with are all of them, but the ones <laughs> I didn't nail, I didn't, I didn't nail them. They nailed me. And that was Buddy Holly. Mm -hmm. And it's a movie that I did in England with. Nick Rogue, and that went to competition in the Cannes Film Festival in France. Lethal Weapon, Star is Born, Under Siege, uh, Point Break, 1991. Great movie. Yeah, so wow. when, you, when you did that movie, were you like, this is, this is going to be awesome? This is going to be a cult classic? Because it is. It's a, Point Break is a cult classic in my mind, where well, people, you know, you see it, and you've even seen it go to, I think people are, are doing it 
on stage now, which is almost the true sign of a cult classic. They bring it out on stage. They have a point break too. People talk about it. It's one of those movies. If you're watching on TV and you see it on, I watch the whole thing no matter what. Don't yeah. get off my seat. Well, it was a magical movie. And uh, at the end of the movie, Patrick Swayze, God bless you, Patrick Swayze. Yes. We're, sent, we're both from Harris County in Texas. He's Houston, I'm Goose Creek. He wouldn't let me alone. He said, you got to go skydiving with me. You'll be perfectly safe. You jump out of a perfectly good thir- airplane at 13,000 feet, and you'll face fear and apprehension like you haven't faced before. You've got to shoot, and you open up, shoot, whoop, it opens up, and you guide yourself down. Wouldn't let me go every time I turned around. Okay, we're going to go to skydiving. I said, stop. Finally, shut him up. I said, I give him a word of honor. I'll go. And when you're from Texas and do that, that means you're going. I picked him up at 4 a.m., went to six hours of ground school, jumped out of a perfectly good airplane at 13,000 feet, fell at 124 miles an hour, I fell 9,000 feet in 55 seconds, opened my chute, poof, and floated down. Championship. Yeah, must have felt pretty good. With Patrick Swayze. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. yeah. Now he's a, he's a soul my brother of mine. Yeah. At the end of that movie. Hear that? Yeah, that's the train. Yeah. Is that an earthquake? That there's might be train Patrick Swayze. That, there's a train that goes right underneath the studio. We built our recording studio on top of a train station. Really stupid. That's so Pretty you can dumb. jump out of the window and hit the train, right? Pretty right. So yeah, really, really yeah. dumb. I'll catch that train right now. Yeah, Boop. right. Exactly. Exactly. You guys are smarter than you look. No, we're not. Sort of we're much dumber. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. No, it's such an honor to be here with you. It's such an honor to be on your show with you. You're both beautiful souls and wonderful people. You've got the greatness of love and consideration in your heart to talk about what we're talking about and why I'm here to talk. is about a play I'm doing called yes. Only Human. Yes. St. Clement's Theater. Only Human has four characters. The boss, which is God, that's me. Okay. Mary Magdalene, Kim. Lucifer, Marco Scalante and Jay. Evan okay, who? Evan, Evan, Evan Malpe. Evan Malpe. Okay, is that Jesus Jay? Yeah, that's Jay. Jesus Jay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it is a funny musical, but it has the spirit that will come to you softly and funny like, and you will go in there. I'm not acting. I'm believing. Right. There's no acting required here. Is there any difference between acting on stage and uh, and acting in front of a camera, whether it's TV or a movie? What, what different, you know, how do you approach those two different styles in, uh, in separate ways? Well, I had a good uh, miracle happen to me. I studied camera technique and film awareness with James Best. God bless James Best and I'm going to say Jesus Christ. He's gone, but he's not really for me. And he taught us how to work on the set. And this, huh? You're talking like this to reach the back row so they can hear you. <laughs> well, movies, you got a mic. You're going, hey, I want to talk to you about something that's important to you. They hear you, and it's soft, it's slow, it's moving. When you're in a close up on a screen, your face is 12 feet wide. So the word, the thing you don't want to do is do this rub your lips. Because your finger comes across, your finger's eight feet long, and <laughs> goes across your mouth, and you're missing the point of the actor's dialogue. It's fun. It's great. It's all the same, but yet it's not. And that's the great thing about life. Life, L-I-F-E, stands for living in forever eternity. Ooh. It's not ever We've got to get to the Buseyisms in a minute. You have the book here, too. But I wanted to ask you a question about, well, hey, about the James book? Best. No. Okay. Uh, I, I actually listened to uh, some, some other interviews you did before this one, and you told a story about your first job and, the, and what James Best told you to make sure you do on your first job, and I thought it was a really good life lesson for oh. most people. Can you tell Beautiful. that story about how you basically yeah. walked around and said, hey. Okay, okay, don't yeah, tell yeah, it. I won't tell don't it. Don't tell it, shut you up. You go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, the first day when you go on the set, walk around to the head of every department, camera, grips, props, Electricity, sound, and tell them, I'm really excited to be here. It's my first day of working. And if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. I had one day of work with no dialogue. I ended up with three days of work with seven lines, just because I paid attention to the other person's feelings before thinking about me and my faults. Don't think about your faults when you're doing art, or the art won't come true in you. 
Art is only the search. It's not the final form. It is unlimited. And it's beautiful. And Jimmy put me in a great place to step into the career. Climbing a ladder, I already knew how to climb. I, I love that story like just because it, yeah. it's a great lesson to everyone. Like, hey, when you have your first break, when you get your first chance, don't just take the chance. Go beyond that and you know what find you do? more out of it. You, you, you're not taking the chance. You're giving your chance to others to let them know you are so proud of them being with you because without you, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a karma thing. The, right. more, the more positive energy, the more... Comic? The karma. The, oh. more, the more you're willing to help somebody else... Karma, yeah. The more they're going to look for you to be the first person to give help to. Yeah, that's right. When you tell them, I'll do anything to help you, hey, let's help this dude, you know? Yeah. God, I really, they've never had that said to them. Mm -hmm. That's what they told me. Nobody's ever come up and told us, whatever I can do for you, let me know. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's giving love. Because they're behind the scenes people, and they don't usually get that from the actor. Well, behind the scenes people doesn't mean they're behind the scenes. That means what they do behind the scenes is in the scene, on the scene, and you can see it, feel it, hear it, and love it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like Hank. That's true. That's our producer right producers there. Yeah. Hank will Where? do whatever you need. Hank what? is right Except there. for being on your fantasy football podcast because we didn't get first That's place. Hank. We didn't get team of the week one week. What kind of hat is that? Uh, Fred's Bar. It's a bar in Louisiana. In Baton, Baton Rouge. Rouge. Hey, good Moose luck. In Tiger Land. Yeah. It's one of the best bars of all time. Do you know what bar stands for, B-A-R? No. No. Buy another round. Ooh. Mm. All right, let's talk about Buseyisms. Like that. So your book, Praise for Buseyisms. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love Buseyism. Explain how Buseyism started. Well, I was writing a journal. I've been betrayed to my heart. <laughs> and I was writing about what happened to me. And I was... <laughs> and I realized, <laughs> hey, this is in the past. Where am I now? Now, okay, now, N-O-W. That stands for no other way. The first Buseyism I wrote, I was re uh, recovering from a traumatic brain injury. And the hospital... The doctors put me in a smock, gave me a clipboard to take me on rounds so I'd feel like they told me I was going to be playing the doctor in the next movie. So I did, okay. And I would scribble things that you couldn't read. And I went to a drawer where the patient opened it up, underwear and socks, all messed up. So I rearranged it. And I said, that is neat. My first abuse is it was neat, nice, exciting, and tight. And then came the others, and they kept coming, they kept coming. Faith, F-I-I-T-H, fantastic adventures and trusting him. Hope, H-O-P-E, heavenly offerings prevail eternally. Relationship, R-E-L-A-T-I-O-N-S-H-I-P. That's big Really one. exciting love affair turns into overwhelming nightmare. Sobriety hangs in peril. <laughs> 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 Romance, R-O-M-A-N-C-E, uh -huh. stands for relying on magnificent and necessary compatible energy. Ooh, that's a good that's one. That's a really, I really good like one. That one. Yeah. Sim we, simple. Can we? No. Yeah, go ahead. Can simple. No, no, simple. Go. Yeah, simple. S-I-M-P-L-E stands for see it manifesting precious, loving energy. Mm. So just be simple. You get sweet. The eyes connect. There's a glaze on the eyes. The hands touch. The hands start sweating. And the rest is up to you. Okay. Fun. Fun. F-U-N. Finally understanding nothing. I That's like that great. One. Yeah. yeah. That's really fun. That's why, cause <laughs> yeah. once, you don't, once you realize you don't understand anything, you're just having a great fun. time. You're just like, there it is. You laugh. This is great, yeah. You laugh. Uh, what about, how about... Uh, Which one? Sober. 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 S-O-B-E-R. Sober. Sober. -E Son of a bitch. Everything's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Do you have one for Gary? Uh, oh, gosh. I don't do proper names. What about Damn. football? But I do Busey. Can you do, okay. B-U-S-E-Y. Being under spiritual energy yearly. Mm. I like that. Can you do football? Football. I play football. Football. If, if you were to make that abuseism, finding other offers, trusting, believing, and living love. Ooh, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's just, now, you can just rattle them off. It's like going, you know, to the jukebox and throwing in a dollar and just being like, "Let's get a." Don't abuseism. forget to bring your jukebox money. <laughs> I did see. <laughs> I did see that you played Bear Bryant. Yeah. Back in the Ooh, 70s. Yeah. What was that like playing well, playing Bear? 
I'd like to welcome you all to the Alabama football program. There's 120 of you here. And down on the goal line, you'll see six footballs. Now, when Beebs, Gene Starling here, the coach, blows the whistle, I want you to go down there and give me a football. But, bam! It looks like the Battle of Algiers for 15 minutes. Leroy Jordan, freshman, he came back with four footballs. And Bear looked at him and said, I don't even think this boy has to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy Jordan and Billy Neighbors, All-American Guard, were not allowed in contact drills because every time they hit somebody, that person had to go to medical relief. Mm. So they saved it for the game. Bear is fishing with Duffy Doherty, coach of Michigan. Duffy, you know, people around here in Alabama think I can walk on water. And Dove said, well, here we are. Try it. Okay. Stepped on the water, <laughs> sunk, got up, and said, if you ever tell anybody you see this, I'll take away your whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bear said, why don't we get this over with quick? Here, I got some dynamite. <laughs> Boom! And about 18 fish floated up. They took them in. Don't tell anybody we you dynamite. <laughs> okay, let's go home and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so you played football. You played football at uh, in college, right? You had a scholarship? I played football at grade school, junior high, high school, junior college, college, scholarship shot. Then I hurt my knee, took, lost my football scholarship and transferred to Oklahoma State University and majored in theatrical arts. Did you love football? Did you love playing football? When Still you did do. Play? Yeah. So my dad was an All-American in high school. So, boy, I followed dad's shoes, you know. I never made that, but doggone it, I was good. Yeah. Because I believed in myself and doing it. And that's what you must do. Whatever you're doing, however you feel about it, believe in yourself first. And your belief will come true in you to accomplish achievement you know you can do. Have you ever run into a situation where you start you start to lose that belief in yourself and uh, and you have to find out a way how, how to get it back? No. I always have the way to get it back. Just believe in yourself and be truthful with your heart. Hang on a minute. <coughs> Bless you. I, I coughed at this stage. Oh. I, t I retract my bless you. No, don't do that. <laughs> okay, then bless, bless you again. You. Yeah, yeah, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. You corrected bless you. my bless you, though, so I felt like I needed to. Yeah. It was confusing. You're well, blessed. You're you... ble As a minister, I'm a minister. Oh, you are. You're blessed, sir. What What is your ordinance? Uh, Universal Church of the Life. What is that? Uh, it's, it's, a, online. it's a registered ministry yeah. that I'm a minister of. Is that at your house? Uh, it could be anywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> okay, How beautiful thing, the beautiful right thing about it is it, it's universal, so it could be anywhere. Yeah. How would you rate our spiritual energy as a duo and maybe just in the podcast room? Like I this think room. it's great. I think yeah. it's all great because you own it, you have it, and you don't have to stand on the box and pontificate, I see the light. You can't. You don't have to do that because I feel your spirit. I feel it's rich. I feel it's full. I feel it's, feel it's loving. And... Uh, yeah, that's my truth, and my truth is the truth because I'm playing God in the play called Only Human. Only Human. Yeah, you got to come see this play. When does it, when does it you, start? We're going to come. Uh, when? October 8th. October 8th. St. Clement Theater? St. Cle 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 Clement's. What? St. Clement's Theater. St. Clement's Theater, October the 8th. I, we're going to go to it. No, you have to go and bring your friends and, and put it... If we come, will you, will, can we be considered one of your friends? Like, when we show up, will you, you be like, oh, those are our guys? That's let my me guys tell you there. this, buddy. You're yeah. my, you are forever my friend. Hell yes. In the past, 423 uh, West 46th Street. Yeah. That's where it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm forever in the, in the crew. We're going. Now, uh, what, I, what I'd like to ask you to do, from my heart of truth, advertise the play yes. on your show. Yes. And, I'm, we're going to go and review it, and we're going to give you five stars. That's five. What about it's six? actually balls system. Yeah, five, five balls. balls. We we rake everything on the ball system. Balls. Yeah. yeah. What happened to you at, when you were young? You, a lot of balls. stuff. Balls. Yeah, a lot Did, of stuff. Were you walking on a trailer and slipped and fell and <laughs> that boom? Something <laughs> something is wrong with all of our brains. I agree. <laughs> with yeah. your brain, something's yeah. wrong. I yeah, think I mean, so. I'd say to do what we do, there's something got to be a little off, right? No, something's great about your brain. Something's full about your brain. Something's wonderfully loving about your brain. I think the stuff that makes our brains different makes them good. Like I think we have very unusual brains, 
But if you learn to love that your brain is unusual, it actually becomes an asset. You know, that's true because every one of us individually in our own personal being are different. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it interesting, loving, and happy because everybody's different from you. That doesn't mean they're better. That doesn't mean they're worse. That means there's something of their own galaxy that gives you love and gives you something to understand and see that you can't just understand and see by mm. dealing with yours. Let everybody come into your heart. Let all the galaxies come into your heart and give them love and understanding for who they are, what they are, how they are, and when they are. I have a, this might be a dumb question for somebody who's as an accomplished actor as yourself, but I've always just wondered how professional actors memorize their lines. Is it in front of a mirror? Do you read them through? Do you say them out loud? Ha! You, you just reminded me. Uh, Jane Best told me the, the power of cold reading is you take this, you know, you're given, okay, go out and look at those three pages and come back in in six minutes, you'll do the pages. So I go out and take this six pages and read my lines to myself without emotions. Don't read the lines being said to you, just look at them. 25 times. You go back in and put the script on the table and walk to the room and point to something on the wall and say, this is beautiful. And the director says, my daughter made me that. And then the stall master, the casting director, said, Gary, you ready? I'd circle behind the director giving him the first line. All the way through it. Because I had it in my heart. Doesn't mean I remembered it perfectly, but my feelings of the line I was saying were there forever. Mm -hmm. Cold reading. Acting. I told you what it is. It's the absence of acting. Mm -hmm. It is when you're, but that's okay. It's okay. I'm not judging anything. If you judge, you will be judged. What was it like doing Entourage? A TV show was wonderful. Larry Charles, who ran it, organized, created it. I went there and said, "Where's this, Where's my script?" He said, "You're the script." Ooh. What? Just make it up as you go. <laughs> hey, that's my forte. Yeah. <laughs> so I did the three shows we did, and it was wonderful. Then four years later, they made a movie. And I did the movie, and that's what it was. It was wonderful. And uh, that's that with Entourage. Yeah, you got Entourage. to play yourself. Yeah, that's what I do all the time. Even though I'm in the costume, makeup, and different hairdo or whatever, myself is beginning the artisticness of the character I am playing. Therefore, the character becomes me. Mm -hmm. No acting required. Mm. That's like a, a beautiful life hack for, for oh, acting. A life hack? Yeah. What's a life hack? It's like what you're saying, like instead <laughs> of acting, you just be yourself. Yeah. 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 So just what millennials call a trick. Think right. of yourself with the innocence of yourself when you were nine years old. You're not acting, you're just being you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the grand slam home run and the target hitting and zen in the art of archery. I like that. I think I actually peaked when I was nine years old. You peaked? That was my, well, yeah, as an athlete especially, because then everybody grew and I didn't grow. What were you peaking at? I, uh, basketball, baseball, football, soccer. What was this you playing football? Golf, fullback. Full Wide receiver, kicker. Were you a good runner? No. Did you snap anybody's sternum? Never. Oh. My own. Did you snap anybody's sternum? Yeah, sir? it's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> what, what position did you play? I played center, guard, and linebacker. Okay. okay. So, yeah, you definitely snapped some sternum. I could snap a football 30 yards into a bushel basket. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's pretty good. That's, That's yeah, pretty good. really good. Um, what, right, is your, what, is your, what is your favorite thing you did in your life watching movies? What inspired you to do what you did after you saw a great movie? Mm. Which one was it? Mm. With the exception of mine. When I saw The Hangover, I decided to go out and get drunk. I would course. say Best of the Best 2. I wanted to be uh, like a, a underground martial artist. And I saw that when I was like probably 26. So it was probably a little late. But yeah. What was the name of the movie? Best of the Best 2. Oh, okay. You, uh, Wayne Newton was in it. The Coliseum. He has people come in there and they fight for rich people. Wayne Newton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donkey Shane. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, 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 Donkey Shane. Point Break made me want to rob banks. <laughs> for sure did. Best way to rob banks in the daylight is wear a tie like Nicole Miller would make. A tie that's just so garish. And they go to the teller, detective, and say, what do you look like? I don't remember that, but his tie was just such a fat. <laughs> and this was told to me by a guy who really did that, and he just got out of prison. He was on the set. I was doing a movie with Dustin Hoffman and my son Jake when he was five, straight time. 
I feel like I'm talking too much about me. No, this is no, not no, about no, me. No, this no. is this about is a play about called Only Human. Yes, that's which we're true. all advertise that every see. day, and we're all going to go see it. We're going to see. You have to bring everybody you don't know too. Okay, yes. but how do I? How would I bring somebody that I don't know? God, yeah. look at New York streets. Just yeah. walk around the streets and tell people. But then I know them. We got to give them cards. This well, is, no, we're this doing that right human. now. The, this podcast is telling all the people we don't know to come and see the play. Don't tell them you don't know them. No, I love because them. No, we know them. We they them. know us. We don't know them maybe no, specifically. No, no, you know them. You know their hearts. That's and true. So they're hearing you and they love it. Take the cards. We'll give you some cards and give them out to people. It says, only human. It's the worst plan. It's winner's plan. And it's lovely. You'll come in there... Happy, and you'll leave happier. Ooh, I like that. You'll come in there, I don't know what I'm going to see here, and you'll leave. God, that was great. I want to tell everybody about this play, Only Human. You hear that out there, guys oh, guys and girls? Only Human. <laughs> okay, I have one last question about Only Human. Uh, <laughs> so every single week, how long does the play run for? For three years. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times a week do you do it? Uh, I do. We do five performances a day. No. I do it every night except uh, Wednesday. Okay. Saturday. Yeah. So so each night that you're doing it, right? So you're doing it five, six times a week, let's say. Do you try to do something a little bit different oh, each no. performance? Oh, no. You stay with what is written. You stay with what the director desires you to do. Don't go against the grain of their soul or you're missing the point of the message of the play. And I learned that when I did Midsummer Night's Dream, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Oh, unrhymed I am a pentameter with no punctuation. That guy is funny. Yeah, Billy. <laughs> He's funny. Old Billy Shakespeare. Yeah. He, he knew how to write. Well, what? he was born on April 23rd, and 53 years later, he died on April 23rd. So two and three is five, two and three is five, five and five is ten. Ten is the number of accomplishment, achievement, and a new challenge. Interesting. It's, it's so interesting. You need to write it down, put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> That's like the mind blow. Yeah, we need to have that transcribed, put on a quote card, because I don't think I'm going to be able to absorb it right now. Say that again. Two, five and f two and three is five. Five, five and five is ten. Ten is the number of challenge, new changes, and accomplishments. And accomplishments. Okay. And it's Billy You know, when you accomplish an achievement, you get a new mark on your heavenly belt of goodness, grace, loving. Uh -huh. Bah, that's all. That's what life's about. With goodness, grace, loving, acceptance, and respect. All you guys out there listening to me, I'm glad you're listening to me, and I'm going to meet you one day. So every one of you are required to come to see the play, Only Human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Did, well, um, go ahead. Do you believe in hell? Hell? No. Yeah. Hell? Yeah. Hell is what you make it within yourself. Okay. So hell is, hell is a self-imposed condition. Well, it's something that's uh, created by men who wrote the Bible. It's created by, hell is really something you create yourself. I've been, the difference between organized religion and spirituality is organized religion is built for people to be afraid of hell. Spirituality is for people who have been there. I'm in a second group. Mm. I cause my own hell. Mm. Everyone can cause their own hell, just know how to get out of it, come to the light and say, thank you, God. That's very insightful. Thank you. Um, all right. Only human. Yeah. Gary Busey, thank you for coming by. Hey. We'd love to have you back on. Maybe we'll go see the, the play well, and then hey, have hey, you back hey, on at the end of the run this, this, in three this, years. Dismiss the word maybe. No, we are going to see it. So, you, yeah, so you'll be back on. How long are you going to be in this play? Three years? Maybe four. four. four what, what is it? Through, through December, December 15th. 15th. So October 8th through you, December 15th. We're going to see it during that time, and then we're going to have you back on before you leave New York, and we'll talk about the play some more and yeah. even more. I mean, people are going to love this interview. You know, this play is being worked on, has been being worked on for eight and a half years. Jeez. And this is coming to a beautiful mountain of spiritual miracles and blessings. I love it. We're going to take a field trip, the whole crew. We seriously are. It's been too long since the we've whole had crew. a mountain of spiritual blessings. We're going blessings. to take a field trip. Hey, you need to hold them up to this, partner. Yep. Oh, Hank, why don't you <laughs> oh, ever take me going. out for mountains of spiritual blessings And then anymore. we're going to have you back on, and we're going to talk about how great you were. 
No, don't talk about how great I am, because we already know that. Let's talk about how great the play was. <laughs> that too. That too. All right. Yeah. Gary BC. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Ah, oh, wait, wait. Yes. Here. And the book. Pray, yes. This book is for you, Dan. Thank you. Read what I wrote. Oh, wow. Um, Look at this. Thank you it. for your blessing in every way. This book is for you, Eric. Thank there you. There we go. Read what Thank you. I'll give read, that to my brother. Read, you wrote the read, same thing. Read what he wrote. Yep. Read yours. Thank you for the blessing in every way. God blessed you. Oh, you got God blessed God you? blessed you when you were born. Hey. Oh, Gary damn. B Hart, Gary I don't know BC. who's got the better one. That's very sweet. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know how much more of a show we could put on this play other than, like, go watch Gary Busey no, play. I know. Man, this I, is know. Incredible. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. No, that's great. No, Can't. we're going. We're going. No, we're you saying... need to cancel the next guest. I'm not leaving. Okay. okay. Perfect. <laughs> you want to watch Florio? football all day? We're going to watch football all day. Football? Yeah, we're going to watch it all day. I don't blame you. All right. <laughs> Gary Busey, thank you so much. Thank you. And come see the play on the Hubot. <laughs>